Here we have a few review topics to mention before we get into more of a review of some of the algebra. So this is a bit more in the realm of arithmetic. Quick reminder about a few things as well as a few examples to help you along, knocking any rust off. Opposite numbers are numbers that have different signs, one's positive, one's negative. Absolute value, officially defined as the distance from zero to a number. The gist of it is, it's like math jail. Any number that's inside, the math jail will turn that number positive. So a couple of examples here, the absolute value of four, four is already positive, so when it gets out of math jail, it stays positive. The absolute value of negative pi, when it gets out of math jail, that number will now be a positive pi. In this case, we've got the absolute value of 2.5. That 2.5 is gonna stay positive, but then it has negative influences on it when it gets out of math jail, and so overall, that number will be a negative. And likewise, here in this fourth example, once this number gets out of math jail, it will turn positive, but with the negative influences out in front, overall, our answer will be a negative. As far as things that have exponents, we refer to b raised to the power n. b is the base, n is either the exponent or the power, depending on how you like to phrase it. Essentially, what we have is a special multiplication problem. The warning here would be, be careful about whether there are or are not parentheses around something like, for instance, a negative number as you're working things out. Whoops. <clears throat> Continuing on, quick reminder as well about square roots. Essentially, we can ask ourselves what positive number do we square in order to get whatever number is underneath. We can also use the calculator at this stage to work that out. And for the time being, we do have nice square roots that would show up in these review type assignments. So it would be for later on that we complicate matters a little bit more. Order of operations, a lot of people refer to that as please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Another option, perfect every minute detail and succeed. But what these lack is a little something that we have with the multiplying and the dividing and then afterwards with the adding and the subtracting. The multiplying and the dividing are worked as they appear from left to right. The adding and subtracting, when we're ready for those, would also be worked out as they appear from left to right. So what we can do to try to remember that is put an arrow underneath the M and the D, and then put another arrow under the A and the S to remind ourselves that when we're ready to handle multiplying and dividing, if there is nothing else that controls how we work through the problem, then we would work through either the multiplying or the dividing, whichever comes up as we read from left to right. Another way of kind of getting the gist of this across, work your way from the inside out. So a quick couple of examples here to illustrate some of these ideas. In this first example, 1.75 divided by 0 0.25 minus parentheses 1.25 squared. According to our order of operations, we have division, we have subtraction, we have the parentheses, and we have that squared showing up. So we have four things that we would have to worry about here in the order of operations informing us as to which of those four things we need to work first. Well, according to the order of operations, we'd want to focus on the parentheses, but there's nothing inside the parentheses to calculate. So the parentheses aren't actually collecting any calculations together for us to really worry about. So that leaves us now with three actions, the division, the subtraction, and that power of two. Our order of operations tells us that exponents would be given the higher priority. So we've got that power worked out using a calculator. And then that leaves us with two, division and subtraction. According to our order of operations, division would come before subtraction. So we do the division first. And last, we work out that subtraction to get our final answer. 
in this other example here, we have where the arrows are helping us to remember things and helping us basically avoid making a mistake, getting an incorrect answer. In this particular problem, five times four divided by 16. <coughs> we do not have any parentheses or brackets or any sort of extra symbols that are telling us which of the two, either the multiplying or the dividing, that we would need to work first. So there has to be something in the order of operations that tells us that, and it's the arrow, that commonly forgotten arrow. Multiplying and dividing are evenly matched. Whichever one comes first as I read through the problem is what I would want to do first. So I will want to work the five times the four because it's the first part that shows up. Five times four gives me 20, and 20 divided by the 16 gives me a decimal answer. I could just as easily have switched things up there where we had instead a five and a divide by four and a times by 16. In that particular case, the division would come first. And so I would work out the five divided by four and then work out that particular answer times the 16 for a final answer. So we can see how that sort of thing can make a big difference. We wanna make sure that we're careful about remembering those arrows and how they fit into working through order of operations problems. Additionally, there is a separate video that covers the review of polynomial information, a little bit of introduction there, so you can move along and review that information.